Hello and welcome. This is going to be a short video showing you how to set up a static IP on your Raspberry Pi. This is a follow-up to um, uh, a previous video uh, in which I show you how to install a LAMP server. Uh, and if you haven't watched that, you're going to want to watch that first. Uh, that'll tell you uh, how to figure out what your dynamic uh, IP address is, where to find it, uh, and how to get your Raspberry Pi initially set up as a, uh, as a web server. Uh, so watch that video first, then come back to this one. This is just a short configuration exercise uh, on setting a static IP. Uh, why would you do that? Well, most servers have static IPs. Um, if you, uh, uh, your server is running on DHCP, it's possible that the um, IP address would change uh, when the DHCP lease uh, expires. And of course, you always want a server to have the same IP address, uh, even if it's on your home network. Uh, and so the first thing to do is to figure out how your home network is set up. Uh, to do that, you're going to want to get into your router um, uh, administration program uh, and take a look at the DHCP server settings. It's probably going to look something like this. Um, these screens vary a little bit from router to router, brand to brand. Uh, but what you're looking for is to make sure that DHCP is enabled, uh, and that almost certainly is already enabled, uh, because otherwise you wouldn't have gotten a DHCP address to get the Raspberry Pi going to begin with. So uh, we, we are suspecting that it's already enabled. But what you really are looking for is this range of addresses. Uh, and the range of addresses are the addresses that it has reserved for use with DHCP clients. And what you need to do when you set up a static IP is make sure that you set up a static IP outside this range of addresses. So this is very typical. Um, this particular router has a starting IP address of 192.168.1, uh, and then the triplet here is 100, uh, and it reserves 50 addresses giving you an IP address range of 192.168.1.100 up through 192.168.1.149. Um, uh, and that would be fine. Every once in a while you see a router set up uh, where the entire range of available addresses, that is from 2 to, um, uh, uh, to what, 254, 255, um, is reserved for DHCP. And if that's the case, you're going to have to adjust that range because you've got to be able to assign a static IP outside this range. As long as it's outside this range, it doesn't really matter what um, static IP address you pick, uh, as long as it's within the um, uh, within the um, uh, range of your your um, um, home network, um, your the, the the network numbers assigned. So it's going to have to start out with 192, 168, one or zero or wh whatever your whatever your home uh, uh, router is set up to be. Uh, and then just pick any number that's not used by anything else that um, is outside this uh, range of IP addresses. Uh, so then the next thing you need to do is you need to log into, um, you need to log into the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, wherever it is currently situated. And um, we found out in a previous video that this particular one was assigned 192.168. Uh, dot one dot one thirty one. Uh, I'm using this uh, secure shell program uh, to log directly into the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi, as you recall, is running headless. Um, the only thing connected to the Raspberry Pi are an Ethernet cable for the internet connection and the power cable, uh, and it's turned on and it's running. So this should connect us to the command line of the Raspberry Pi. log in as, and remember the default password unless you've changed it to username is pi, and the password is raspberry. Uh, and we're at, the, um, uh, we're at the command line on the Raspberry Pi. You can confirm the address that you just typed in and as well as other information by typing ifconfig. Uh, that's the uh, command to tell you information about your networking. Um, and that shows you that um, uh, your, your current um, internet address uh, as assigned by the router through DHCP is 192.168.1.131, which we already knew. Uh, now to configure a static IP, uh, you really just need to make a couple of simple edits to a, a configuration file. Uh, and I'm going to clear the screen here so you can perhaps see this better. sudo nano. Um, nano is the um, text editor we're going to use to configure this file, and it's slash etc. Uh, slash networking, slash network, slash interfaces. Uh, 
Now, this configuration is really going to only work um, uh, the way I'm going to show you for the wired connection, that is the connection using the Ethernet cable. Uh, if you um, um, uh, have already tried to configure wireless networking, you're going to have some other lines in here. Uh, and to be able to configure a static IP is a little bit more complex. So I'm going to suggest you watch this video to kind of get an idea of what you need to do. Uh, but if you need to configure those extra wireless lines, uh, then uh, uh, you might want to um, uh, do some searching on Google to see if you can come up with some advice for that. Uh, so this covers uh, the static configuration for the Ethernet connection. Uh, as if you've never configured a wireless configuration, this is what your network interfaces, uh, interfaces um, uh, file is going to look like. Uh, and all we really need to do to configure this uh, for a static IP uh, is back up over this DHCP line here, uh, put in static. And then we need to add some lines. We need to add an address. Uh, and I'm going to use 192.168.1.4. Uh, that's outside the range of the of those reserved for for uh, DHCP on my router, uh, as we saw just a few minutes ago. Uh, and I know that this is not configured. F um, uh, this address is not assigned to something else. Uh, so we've got the address set, and that's the fixed address that we're going to use. Uh, then we're going to uh, add a net mask, uh, and that's always going to be um, this 255 dash or .255.255.0 uh, on, on a home network uh, with that 192.168.1 kind of um, uh, setup. Uh, the net mask is always going to be that. It's, it's possible that it could be something else if your router is set up a little bit differently. Uh, so check your router. Uh, check the way it's configured if you believe that um, uh, it's set up some other way. Somewhere in your router configuration it's going to show that. Uh, but this is almost always going to be the case with home routers. Uh, finally, you're going to need to add the gateway. The gateway is the IP address of your router. Again, with home routers, it's almost always 192.168.1. And then the last number is 1. Um, now, the first, um, uh, the first three numbers of this triplet, 192.168.1.1, are the numbers that comprise your home network. Um, so those numbers are going to be the same. Uh, the last number on a on a, um, a home network for the router itself is almost always a one. Again, that could change. Um, we need to um, uh, add um, gateway here. So we've got gateway 192.168.1.1. Uh, and then there's an optional line that we can add for, for DNS name servers. Um, you probably don't have to add these, uh, but if you want to, you can. Uh, you can either use your ISP's DNS uh, server uh, IP addresses if you happen to know them. Uh, otherwise, you could use Google's uh, or OpenDNS. Uh, they provide uh, third-party um, DNS name server service. You can Google that if you're interested in finding out more about it, but I'm going to show you what the line looks like. And I'm going to use Google's here. Google has got two of them. 8888 is one of them. And 8844 uh, is another one. And there's a space between these two. Uh, right there, there's a space. Uh, and so that's what we need to do to configure this uh, interfaces file for static IP. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Yes. Uh, and then to get that to take effect, we need to uh, reboot. Uh, so we're going to do sudo reboot. Uh, and, um, uh, of course, that is going to kill our connection. You can see that server unexpectedly closed the network connection, so I'm going to click OK. Uh, we're just going to wait a minute and then reconnect. All right, we've been waiting for a minute, uh, and the server should be booted up now, so we need to reconnect. Uh, one thing you can do if you lose a connection uh, and uh, you're connected with a program like PuTTY is you can just select um, uh, Restart the Session. And let's see what happens if we try to do that. Now, as you can see, not much is happening. We've got a network error connection timed out. And why do you think that might be? Well, because it's trying to reconnect to our old uh, uh, IP address. Uh, I'm going to click OK on that. You can see that um, our old IP address is the 131, but we've changed it. 
uh, we've now uh, uh, changed this to um, uh, 1.4. So in order to do this, we can either start a new session, uh, new SSH from the command line or whatever, uh, and we're going to have to use the new IP address. Uh, so I've got 192, 168, 14. That's the new IP address we set. Let's click Connect and see if we get any luck with that. Uh, we do. We get another message that says the server's host key is not cached. Uh, we saw that um, uh, in the last video. Uh, this is a home network, so of course we can trust it. Uh, it's a new key because we've got a new IP address. We're going to go ahead and say yes, we can trust that. Log in as Pi. The uh, password is Raspberry. Uh, and we're going to be logged in here. And now when I run ifconfig, uh, you can see that we have our new IP address, our static IP address, 192.168.14, and we're all set to go. Uh, so that pretty much it, that's pretty much it for the uh, static IP configuration, uh, relatively simple. Uh, unless you have wireless or you've been using wireless, so you need to use both wireless and wired. Uh, that's going to get a little bit more complicated. Um, there are a couple of different approaches. Uh, so I would get on the uh, community uh, support uh, forums and so on uh, on the internet if you need to configure that. So thanks for watching.